Welcome back to this wretched video. That's right, Adam and Eve, your federal head, your representative, your prime minister, your president, the one who represented you. How could they be my representative? I didn't even exist to be represented. Could genuinely choose between good and evil. Okay, I get it. So God creates Adam and Eve. They're my representative, despite the fact that I won't exist for another 6,000 years. I'm guessing that's what you believe. And he says, all right, you're the representatives for all humanity. Now, don't eat that fruit. That's a crime. Do whatever else you want. And then they go and eat the fruit. And God says, well, I'm going to have to punish every single one of your constituents who didn't vote for you because you're the federal representative. You're the prime minister. So, okay, say the prime minister. Justin Trudeau has yet another ethics scandal. And, you know, actually, this time, maybe he even just goes out and shoots somebody in the head. How about that? Not even an ethics scandal, just a full-on crime. And so he goes to court, and the judge says, Well, you are the federal representative, which for everyone in the country actually is not true. He's the representative for the people of Papineau, Quebec. Okay, we've got to change the situation here. Okay, it's not Justin Trudeau, it's my member of parliament for b nowhere Alberta, and he commits a crime. And the judge says, Okay, you're the federal representative for the people of b nowhere. You're going down for murder, sir. Police, please go arrest all of the thousands of residents of his riding because they're going to jail too. Yeah, that's how representatives work, right? Now, of course, in this case, I'm talking more about the hell issue, the original sin issue. And that's not really what you're talking about. What you're talking about is more just general bad stuff that happens. General evil, which already doesn't make much sense because Satan, the snake in the garden, existed before Adam and Eve ate the fruit. So that had nothing to do with them. That was already a problem before they made that decision. So you're really making no sense saying that this is human's fault. But okay, let's pretend the snake was just a snake and they just saw a snake that said nothing and then they ate the fruit. And then evil came into the world, including diseases, natural disasters, general pain and suffering, nothing even to do with people. None of which, of course, is caused by humans. That's directly caused by God, if anyone. I mean, humans didn't do it. Earthquakes, for example, are not the product of some human-made earthquake manufacturing plant. But God totally didn't want to make that stuff. He just did it in response to humans doing a bad thing. And he really had no option. I mean, how could he possibly make his own decisions? You know, he's controlled by humans, right? because he only exists inside their heads. And, uh, well, let me get to the point. You've already said this wasn't humans doing. It wasn't humans' plan. Humans had no choice. God created the universe knowing it was going to happen. They were doomed from the start. He saw the future of the universe he would create. He saw that the humans ate of the fruit, and he made that universe. There was no other way but for humans to eat that fruit, because he knew they would do it already. It wasn't even their free will. It was fate. That's what it means for God to know the future. The future is set in stone. You have no way to do anything other than what the future has in store for you to do. In this kind of theistic universe, there's no free will. None. It's a movie. It's prescripted. It's all already been decided. Not by you, but by God. It was preset, or else he could not have known what would happen. Not with absolute certainty. Absolute certainty, absolute knowledge, at least when applied to knowing the future, destroys free will. In your worldview, whether you like it or not, you're just an automaton. You're just a little drone following a script, thinking you're making choices, but you're not. All to stroke God's ridiculous ego. Now, of course, that matters, but let's imagine if that wasn't the case. If they actually did have free will. Well, what is the situation that they're being thrown into here? So God creates a universe. He creates the Garden of Eden. He puts a tree in the middle, with fruit that's not to be eaten, but with total foreknowledge that these people will eat it. In fact, the only purpose in doing all this is to get them to eat it. He makes them tempted to eat it. He makes it so that they like the taste of fruit. He makes it so that they're interested in that particular kind of fruit. He makes it so they're susceptible to suggestion, weak of mind. He doesn't teach them there's evil in the garden that will tell them to break the rules of God. He doesn't even teach them what good and evil are. They don't know how to be good or how to be bad or what that even means because the tree that they ate from was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Before they eat from that tree, they don't even know what that means. These creatures are put in a situation of temptation, completely unequipped to understand where the problem is, what the consequences are, right? As you say, God planned it from the start that this was going to happen. He set up the situation so that free will or not, these people were fucked. They were playing a game that they didn't even know they were in against God. The only way for them to not proceed through this story as it was written was to beat God at his own game. To beat God's plan without having any idea what that plan was, that there was a plan, what that plan was about, no understanding of any elements of the plan, and of course with no other option because it was already pre-established before the creation of the garden that they were going to eat that fruit. They didn't beat an impossible game and so they're evil. 
This is not on them, even within the context of your beliefs. You don't want to admit it to yourself, but this is not on them. This is on God. To blame it on them is just stupid. And then beyond that, of course, these poor ignorant fools in the garden do exactly what they were doomed to do, and everyone else forever has to pay the price. Because they're your federal representatives. Which means nothing, again, by the way. This is not analogous to a country, right? When you have national leaders, you elect someone who you hope is going to make good decisions, you know, spend money wisely, put in good policies that help people, take out bad policies that don't help people, and sometimes they screw up and sometimes Sometimes the country gets worse. That's extremely different from some all-powerful, all-knowing entity creating some, relatively speaking, utterly powerless, totally ignorant beings, making them break its rules, intentionally, and then punishing everyone else for it for no reason. Which by the way, how the fuck do you have the gall to call someone your beloved child after you pull that shit? Just curious. What you're talking about here is more like if you as an adult were, I don't know, driving in your car and you see some kid on the sidewalk, like five-year-old kid, and you say, hey kid, call me a butt face. And so the kid's like, um, butt face? And you're like, what the hell is wrong with you, kid? You know what? You're the federal representative of all kids. So now I'm just going to go around the whole city hitting every kid I see with a baseball bat. How do you like that? Don't you see what you've done? God, you're a terrible person. How could you do this to the other children? Man, those little bastards all deserve it so much. I'm going to enjoy this. I bet they'll think I'm super merciful and nice, too. At least they'd better. And somehow that's still not as bad as what you're talking about. Because again, this is not an omniscient god. A supposedly all-good one. A supposedly flawless and all-loving one. This adult we're talking about is just some nutter. He might be fucked up in the head. You know, have some neurological condition that he can't help. You know, I don't know. But also, he's not, like, setting up a kid-producing factory in his basement and pumping out kids just so he can beat them to death with a baseball bat. To stroke his own fucking ego. How bad do I have to make this analogy to actually make it fully analogous? I'm not even there yet. I'm getting closer, but I'm still not there. This is how bad your god is. Every possible way this story could be fucked up, it's fucked up. <sighs> so, anyway, on another note, how do you feel about bird law? That's the way that God made the place. Yeah, and I'm still surprised you just outright admit it, but, I mean, good. You're doing my work for me, so I'm happy, I guess. Also disturbed, but happy. Now here, here's my question for you. Would you have preferred that God had made the place without free will? Well, if God made the place, then I suppose I would prefer that he not make the place as an evil generating machine so that he can demonstrate to himself how cool and merciful he is by intentionally inflicting it on everyone. I guess. I mean, there's no free will anyway in your story. You think there is, but there's not. Either way, though, free will is really not the point. You say evil is the only reason the world was created. He created the world to be full of evil and suffering, so that people would think he was merciful and graceful and lovingly kind. I feel like this is a much bigger issue than free will. I really don't give a shit about free will. It's not even a secondary issue at this point. I think we have a lot more to talk about. You, you love free will. You love the idea that you make genuine choices. I... Are you talking about Christians or are you talking about atheists? Because for my part, I don't believe in free will the way you believe in it. I believe that the human mind is a product of the brain. I believe the brain is a physical thing constrained by the laws of physics. I believe that the function of the brain can be modified by any number of things, chemicals, structural changes, or things as simple as like a hot room. We are things of our environment. We're physical systems. We're not free to just decide to do anything we want to do. We have strong aversions that we don't control. We have strong likes that we don't control. We can try to avoid indulging in them, but we're still heavily pushed in that direction. We have senses that we can't ignore. We ingest things that alter us in ways we can't control, or even always predict. And I don't just mean drugs, I also mean different kinds of food, or air with different levels of oxygen. We have emotions able to be moderated but not completely blotted out, no matter how much we want to. I mean, it goes on and on and on like this, right? You feel a lot of the time like you're in control. But aside from just the basic stuff I've just said that everybody knows, experiment after experiment shows that you're not nearly as in control of your brain as you think. People want to believe they have this perfect free will, but that's never been true. And that's fine. We're animals, we have instincts, we have feelings, just like everyone else. I don't know why you'd be uncomfortable with that. You've lived that way your whole life. You seem perfectly happy with it. Or maybe not, but either way you're not changing it. It's as much a fact of life as birth and death. What's the problem? 
How would you feel if God made Adam and Eve, and by extension you, without the ability to actually choose? Well, I guess it depends what you mean by that. Do you mean unable to choose like I'm a spectator in my own head, looking through my eyes, feeling through my skin, as the body I'm stuck in wanders around getting itself hurt and making me suffer? It's making decisions that I don't feel I ever made? Is that what you mean? Well, I guess it's hard to say. If I had no idea there was any other option, I'm not sure what I would feel about it. But it sounds pretty bad, from my perspective. Good thing that's not the only option, even in your worldview. There's no dichotomy between that and the story of Adam and Eve that you just told. There's a vast array of options here. Why do people always try to limit God's power? It's bizarre. It's like, I like imagination, I can only come up with two options, so God's only able to do two things because I say so. Most likely, you'd be annoyed. Hey, hey, hey! Well, then we're just puppets. We're just automatons without being able to have a free will. You'd bellyache about that far more than the presence of evil because your federal head chose it. What? I wouldn't bellyache about anything. Unless God made me, because I'd be God's puppet. I wouldn't bellyache about anything God didn't make me bellyache about. But anyway, thanks for clearing it up. So just automatons, eh? Mindless automatons, not making choices, no opinions, just task-performing robots, basically. Okay, well, yeah, so essentially humans wouldn't exist. Like, we wouldn't be here, and so I would not care, because we never would have been created in the first place. I would not have ever existed to care about that. God can have his little automatons, and not make his weird little evil ant farm. Not drag actual thinking people into his fucked up ego-driven scheme. And yeah, that sounds better. A lot better. I mean, if those are the only two options, right? Yeah, sure. I can't imagine how anybody wants to be the victim created just to be in an incredibly unhealthy relationship with some wildly mentally unhealthy god. Like, does that sound good to you, somehow? It doesn't sound good to me. Now, of course, we can put all that aside because those are not the only two options. We're talking about a fucking god! It has more options than that. One option would be, stop acting like a fucking creep, stop trying to get people to stroke your ego, just create a nice universe, and make friends with the people in the universe. You know, don't intentionally inflict evil on people, don't set up weird scenarios with essentially newborn people who don't know anything so that you can entrap them into eating your fruit that you care about so much for some reason. Maybe don't create Satan, you know? Like, make a garden, but don't make the devil part. I know that's incredibly, you know, hard to comprehend. Give people free will, and just let them live their little lives. Maybe make them some fruits that aren't poisoned with evilness that will infect everything in the universe. Might be kind of nice, you know? Um, basically, the universe would just be your ant farm, you know? Which also doesn't sound great, but it also doesn't sound as insane. You know, I'm just spitballing here. Come up with ideas in the comments or whatever. This rambling of mine is just an option. It's certainly not comprehensive. Once again, the way that God made the place is exactly right, because he knows better. Well, no. I mean, he decided what is objectively evil, and then he made the place objectively evil. Intentionally. So he didn't make it right. In fact, he made it intentionally wrong. By his own standard, objectively, it's not right. The atheist doesn't like that there is evil. There isn't evil. Or, to be more specific, I would say there is evil, but by that I don't mean at all the same thing you mean. What you mean when you say evil, in my opinion, is not real. So no, I'm not upset that your idea of what evil is exists, because I don't think it does. You and I have a very different idea about what evil is, where it comes from, what its nature is, just generally how it's decided what is or isn't evil. We're never going to reconcile it. Some of our ideas about what is or is not evil will overlap obviously, but we disagree fundamentally about what that even means. And no, I don't like that there are evil people, or suffering in general. But aside from all that, and much more importantly, obviously, the problem of evil argument is not about anyone's opinion about whether or not they like evil. It's about you believe objective evil is real. You also believe God is all good, all knowing, and all powerful. There appears to be a conflict here. Perhaps you should address the conflict. That's what the argument's about. And instead you're coming back to the pointing fingers and saying, oh, but the atheists, the atheists. The atheists what? The problem of evil does not apply to an atheist worldview. I don't believe there's a god, let alone an all-powerful, all-good, all-knowing one. I don't believe in objective good and evil. Some atheists do, I think, but I don't. The argument is irrelevant to me. 
And my opinions about the concept that we're talking about are also irrelevant. My opinions about God are irrelevant when we're just talking about the problem of evil. My opinions about evil are also irrelevant when we're talking about the problem of evil. It's a logical argument about a hypothesized being, not a competition of opinions. In fact, here, let's switch it around to get rid of some of the confusion. The anti-Christian hypothesizes an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-evil God. And in his anti-Christian worldview, there's good in the world. A God who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-evil would not create a universe in which there is good. And therefore, this is a conflict. Debunk me, bro. Now, is the argument that I just presented going to suddenly evaporate if it turns out that uh, I don't like the existence of good? Is an actual rebuttal to this argument just to point at me and say, you just don't like good things? No, because it has nothing to do with what I like or don't like, does it? Did you hear a goddamn thing in my argument about what I like or don't like? Quote me. You're really not a Poe, are you? You're really this dumb. And that's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad for that, that they adopt the Christian worldview with that sentiment, even though they don't believe in our worldview. Yeah, wank yourself more, dude. They don't like evil, but they also don't like the idea of not having a free will. What are you talking about? I just flat out said we don't have one. I think I kind of implied that I don't really care, too. Like, I am what I am, man. I feel good. Whatever. So I don't have some weird Christian-style libertarian free will. Oh well. What am I gonna do? Cry about it? Come on. Reality is reality. You gotta accept it for what it is, and only then can you deal with it. To be honest, though, that one never really bothered me. I never really had to deal with that one. Like, I started reading a bunch of stuff about the brain and human psychology and so on when I was, like, a teenager, and I thought the books were interesting, and I went, hmm, and then I just got on with things, because, again, what am I going to do? Cry about it? It's just how things work. What do you want from me? God gave your federal head, Adam, that free will. The problem is he biffed it, and you're no different than Adam. You would too. Yeah, if I was a newborn person with no knowledge, no experience, if I hadn't been told there's a snake on the tree that's going to try to talk me into shit, if an all-knowing being knew with perfect foreknowledge that I was going to fuck up, therefore giving me no other choice because it was my locked-in fate, and if that being created the universe specifically so I would fuck it up, created my mind to be predisposed to fucking it up, yeah, I would fuck it up. So would God if the roles were reversed, if I took away all his power, all his knowledge, and left him stranded and naked in a fucking garden specifically designed by me to make him fuck up? He would too. So what? Therefore, the responsibility for evil in the world does not fall on God, it falls on us. Nope, you lost the chance to claim that when you were yelling on the street. The funny thing about all of this is you already admitted what I'm saying. God intentionally made evil, and all good God does not intentionally make evil. That's the argument that you haven't even started to address, you haven't even tried. You just keep veering onto other random crap. And we cannot blame him for making us the way that you would prefer we were made in the first place. The way that you would prefer that we're made in the first place. Doomed to fail? Yeah, I don't prefer that. Why would I prefer that? I don't prefer anything in your story. Nothing. Your story is repulsive. If that actually was the origin of the universe, it should have been tossed in the fucking garbage can day one. Just a trinket for God to use to stroke himself off. That is how I would patiently walk somebody through this philosophical accusation. Yeah, you're dripping with patience. Also, you're not trying to walk anyone through the philosophical accusation. You're trying to walk people away from it. However, here's the issue. Most of the time when people throw that one out, it's like a drive-by shooting. Hey, what about the problem of evil? Boom! I'm gonna save that clip. Hey, what about the problem of evil? Boom! And they're just out of there and they don't want to stop and talk and listen to a thoughtfully considered response. Oh no, please. A thoughtfully considered response would be much appreciated, but I haven't got one yet. They just want something snappy, which means they don't really want a response at all. Wretched, who hurt you? Was an atheist mean to you? Did an atheist present the problem of evil to you and then not accept your counter-argument because it doesn't address the point? Is that what happened? Oh, those meanie faces, oh. Anyway, that's all this guy had to say in his clip here, so I guess that's all I have to say. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like and click subscribe before you go, if you'd be so kind. Enormous thanks to all of my supporters. For early access to videos, sign up to my email list at list.logic.com. And also, the description has an invite link to my Odyssey channel if you want to subscribe over there. See you next time.